Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Well, hello and welcome to this segment of the show. This is Mike Saunders with Marketing Huddle, and today we have with us Scooter with Wisdom Over Hustle, LLC. Welcome to the show, Scooter. Hey, what's going on? Thanks for having me today. Hey, you're welcome. Hey, well, tell us a little bit about your um, label and your business, and um, what what inspired you to become an entrepreneur and uh, a record label uh, producer? Sure, definitely. So, uh, like you said, uh, it is Wisdom Over Hustle uh, Music, LLC, and it's, uh, you know, we like to say WOH Music, WOH Music, W-O-H, W-O-H. You know, everybody's in acronyms and everything like that yep. nowadays. Um, but basically, what got me into it was... I, Funny story, I wasn't actually going to go into it myself. It took a while for me to, uh, you know, birth it. I mean, it's always been there to want to have, have my own record label, um, have my own business and things like that, but I never had a team. Hmm. Uh, the problem was I didn't have a team. I understand you can do a lot by yourself, but with the team, you can do a whole lot more. Um, so this was in 2013. I actually sat down with my wife. Uh, and our closest friends, their husband and wife, uh, Drew and uh, Shanice, we sat down with them. Uh, we came with a plan, and we was like, you know what? I do music. My wife does music. Um, my, my friend Drew at the time, he was doing promotion for another artist. He does promotion, and then his wife is like a booking manager. So I was like, you know what? Uh, let's, <laughs> start with, let's start with us and you know see what we got. Yeah. So uh, we, we launched it in 2013, was the Mobile House of Music, and I have been doing music. Me personally, I've been doing music since uh, 2006, 2005, somewhere somewhere around there. And, uh, you know, I've been doing it for so long, and I kind of built a name for myself in the St. Louis area. So I was like, man, you know what? If we all came together, I never had a, you know, management or anything like this. So instead of trying to look for people to get noticed, how about I try to, you know, help notice other people because I know if I'm yeah. going through this, there's other people that's going through the same thing as trying to get noticed. So uh, we just put our heads together, uh, thinking caps and everything. We prayed, and uh, before before too long, we got, you know, with Mobile Hustle Music. Well, I think that's awesome. Um, I'd love to know uh, the story behind or, or what is the, was the thinking process behind wisdom over hustle. Is there like a... a a story behind why you chose you know, Hustle Over Wisdom or Wisdom Over Hustle. How did that name come about? So uh, the name actually came about uh, from a personal experience. Um, like I said, I've been doing Christian music for a long time, Christian hip-hop rap for a long time. And a lot of times I would go through trying to do things and just do it myself. I would go mm -hmm. through uh, just, you know, without basically without putting a plan together, I would just kind of wing things. I would just do this. Oh, that sounds nice. Let me do this. This sounds nice. Let me do this. And I never had a plan. I never had a purpose. I never had a, you know, well, well I had a purpose, but I never tried to find what that purpose was. And I was just like, let me just do this. I'm going to just go and do it. So it got to a point to where um, my business wasn't flowing. I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. And it just started kind of getting boring. And uh, I was like, man, I, I got to really... I, I got to really sit down and make a blueprint. I got to really, you know, figure out some things. I can't just do this and do this and not. And then people will say, well, what's your next move? I don't know. Whatever comes yeah. about, you know, whatever comes around. So a lot of things, you know, a lot of times in life, I'm, I'm very involved in church. So I, I prayed and a lot of things. And even the Bible says that if a man lacks wisdom, let him ask God. And, uh, you know, to basically think before you act. That's yep. the whole thing behind uh, wisdom over hustle. Yes, it is a Christian and it's church involved, but if we want to just put it in layman's terms, think before you act. Yeah. So uh, that's where the wisdom over the hustle coming from. I, I would just go out and grind, do all of this. And a lot of people hustle. So many people hustle, we grind, we do everything, but a lot of times we don't think before we hustle and we don't have a plan before we hustle. We just see something and it sounds nice and we just go for it without actually sitting down and saying, okay, you know what? Is this better in the long run? Is this better for me to do this or should I wait? 
and then maybe the next opportunity comes that will help me get, uh, you know, get noticed and things like that. So that's where Wisdom Over Hustle came from, and it really means think before you act. And even with music, not, not just with, you know, life, with decisions, even with yep. music, I have to think before I release this song. Is this a good song yep. to release now? Is anybody going through this situation? So yeah. uh, that's where Wisdom Over Hustle came from. Nice. That's huge. And, you know, from a, a practical, worldly perspective, it's like um, the old saying, uh, ready, fire, aim. You know, a lot of people just go fire, fire, and they don't aim. But you need to ready, and then ready, and then ready some more, and then aim, and then aim some more, and then fire. And then from a Christian perspective, um, it's kind of like um, even, even I think it's uh, – Ecclesiastes, I believe, but says without vision, the people perish. And you talked about a blueprint and you need to have a vision. And that vision needs to not be you running up ahead and going, God, come on, follow me, keep up. It needs to be where also uh, the scriptures teaches us that um, be still and know that I am God. And, you know, my ways are not your ways. And, um, you know, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust the Lord with all your heart and then, uh, you know, your ways will be established. Well, all of that wrapped up together, and then you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, but, but here's my record label, and here's my business, and i got to do this differently. But guess what? God does call us to be, have an integrated life, and Sunday doesn't end Sunday night, and Monday through Saturday is not all hours. It is got to sit here and go, where do you want me to be? Where can I serve? And, and I wonder, you know, with that thought in mind, have you found that some of your music has had a really positive impact in people because you did take that time to listen and go, what's the right time for this event or this concert or this word that I can speak into the audience? Have you ever had any feedback that way? Uh, yeah, I have actually. And I think that's one of the things that helps me keep going. Uh, it's one of the greatest feelings in the world, actually, to know, uh, to, like me personally, I don't really get too much into being the hottest, being the greatest, or being the you know best artist out. That's not my lane. My lane is just as a Christian to seek to save the lost, help encourage, help motivate, and help inspire people. So that's how I do my music tr- to try to help mo- motivate, encourage, and inspire people. So a lot of times where people be like, oh, man, this dude is the tightest person, or they'll say this to another artist. Well, when it comes to my music, I love when I I, I I remember the first time I put the, out my song one of my songs, and someone Facebook messaged me and they said, "Man, this song helped me come closer to God. This song helped mm-hmm. me realize that I am somebody, and that I can get through whatever the situation was that they were going to." And it just made me feel real good to know that yeah. you know this is the purpose. You know, the music to me, music is just a tool. So I. Unfortunately, I haven't released a project. Me, personally, I have not re- ever released an album. I've just been putting out song after song after song for free download because it's just what have been placed on my heart. I'm not in it for making money. I'm just in this to help change people's lives and, you know, change how people operate. There's so much negativity going on in the world. I mean, every, you just cut on the news and you can see negative things going on. So uh, I just want to really shine light on everything that's positive, help people out, encourage people, and uh, just let people know, you know, you know, there is a better way in life. There is, uh, you know, there is someone, his name is Jesus, and he loves you and uh, will, will definitely take care of you. Yeah, I, I love it, and that's excellent. And um, I would encourage you to take those feedbacks that you get from people and kind of keep a little list and, and compile them. And, and um, you know, because num- number one, that those kinds of things will um, – encourage other people, but then also there's times that we're in personal peaks and valleys. And when you can get in that valley yourself and then look back at those things and go, you know what? God used this to encourage someone. And there, I'm sure that there's, you know, more and more stories that you can think of. And I'm sure there's other ones from even leaders and mentors that you know that it's like, you know what, this one time that I was going through this time and I heard your song and it really changed the direction of my life you really don't know what a word will do to people. And then we all know, and there's scientific studies, music is powerful. Music moves people. And it doesn't matter the style, the type of music that you do, but music inspires and music moves. So when you can use that for a positive, I think that is huge. And it reminds me of, um, have you ever heard of Del Toro McNeil? Uh, vaguely, vaguely. You ought to Google um Delatoro McNeil and the keynote, and um, he's a just a powerful motivational speaker, and he's got this. Um, have you ever heard of Indiegogo and and uh, Kickstarter things like that? He he's got uh-huh. this um, campaign out, and I contributed to it because I thought this is 
excellent. I've, I've listened to him and I've bought his CDs and his books before, and he's just got a powerful um, uh, message. But what he did was he did a reality TV show and filmed all these episodes teaching people how to be a, a keynote motivational speaker, but all from a positive motivational mindset. And if you think about all these other shows out there that are reality shows, it's all this backbiting and stabbing and fighting and you know negativity, and he's bringing a positive. So you know if that interests you, look at that up online, and that might give you some ideas too. But w- I thought of that because your music, you take a positive spin and I'm sure in your genre of music or any style music you can look to hey here's a positive type of music and here's a negative type of music have you ever had people say to you um, wow I, I just noticed that it, your music just feels different what what are, what are you hearing from people that way so yeah I actually have uh, you know had uh a lot of people actually tell me it's, it's different from what they usually hear with Christian music and things like that and um it, it encourages me uh, because just like any other, um, you know, just like any other artist, I'm pretty sure other artists have felt this way or they've been like, I had a point in my life where I was like, man, I don't sound like this artist. I don't sound like that artist. Man, I don't sound like uh, what's being played on the radio and things like that. And I got to a point where I was like, I tried to actually sound like someone that I wasn't. Mm-hmm. Um that didn't do good uh, because I didn't, uh, you know, the feedback that I got, they was like, eh, okay, <laughs> you know, and then I was like, you know what, I have to get back to my purpose. I have to get back to my plan. I have to get back to how I'm supposed to be doing this and do what I'm supposed to do. And that's just use this music as a tool to help reach people. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I tried so hard to, you know, be who, you know, be other people. And I was like, oh, let me try to keep up with the sound. And I was like, nah, it, it just didn't work for me. So uh, yeah. being with my own style and, you know, actually being led by God on what to write, what to say, yeah. how to say it, how to express, uh, you know, what topics to talk about has just really been helpful. And it's just been encouraging to people because, uh like I said, the, the song Real Love I actually put out, I had someone who just lost a relative, and they let me know. They said, you know, that song really helped me because I felt like, you know, they were taken too soon and things like that. They kind of cried with me, and I cried with them because I kind of felt the emotion, and they can feel the emotion through the song, and it was just really speaking to them and helping them out uh, in that situation when they just lost someone that they uh, really loved. That's that's awesome. That's powerful, and it's so much um uh, of a better approach than just churning out product and w- in any business, but especially with music, sometimes you can feel like you're part of the machine and here's the next single and the next album and the next product and, you know, next. And then it's just at that point, just a job and just a process, but you look at it as a calling and as a purpose. And I think that's amazing and awesome. And obviously you've, you've hinted at obstacles and challenges, but can you think of a challenge or an obstacle you faced that you were able to overcome it, but not only overcome it, but kind of parlay that into an opportunity in your label? Well, yes. Um, actually, when, uh, I've been married. It's going to be seven years. Uh, you know, it, actually, it is seven years now. I've been married to my wife. Um, when we first got married, uh, like I said, I was doing Christian hip hop, and I thought this, and this is just going to be, I'm just going to be real, real honest. When I thought I was doing Christian music at the time, and I was like, man, I'm going to let the Lord take care of me and all of this stuff. That's when I didn't have a blueprint. I really didn't seek him. I was just like, oh, I'm doing this for the Lord, so he's going to bless me regardless, so I'm good. I didn't have a job. Um, So I was like, you know what, I'll just do this show and make sure people pay me and all this stuff, get money. And, you know, as long as I do this for the Lord, they'll pay me. Uh, I had that mind frame. In my actual home, uh, we didn't have any... The bills were piling up. Uh, we didn't have hot water. We didn't have, um, you know, lights were on and off, uh, basically. And this is at a young age, you know. Uh, first, you know, just got married and everything like that, lost a job. And I was like, oh, I'm going to do this music full time and things like that. And it got to a point where it was just so bad. I looked at my wife and I looked at my kids and they were just like, it was just suffering, you know. We, yeah. we were just like, man, you know. I can't live like this. Being a man and being a husband, a father, being the head of a household, I can't live like this. I remember driving over to my mother's house. She wasn't there. I went there, and I just laid on the floor, and I just started crying. And I was just crying and crying and crying and crying and just boo-hooing and was just like, why, why, why? I'm doing this music for you, Lord. And 
Uh, he, he told me clear as day, he said, go get a job. And I was like, what? You know, I was begging for ministry. I thought ministry yeah. was traveling 24-7, doing music, doing all of this. That's what I thought ministry was because that's what I saw on TV. And that's just what, you know, that's just what was portrayed to me. But the whole time I was begging for ministry and wanting to do ministry 24-7, he, would, he reminded me that I had ministry. The thing that I was begging for, I had ministry. Yeah. And I had to realize, I realized at that moment my first ministry was my wife and my kids. If I can't take care of my wife and my kids, if I can't minister, if I can't hold a family, how in the world can I help someone else outside yep. of my family? So um, at that moment I went. Uh, I, I think it was the next day I went I went to an interview. I actually went to the old job that I got fired from. Um, and then what happened was I was sitting there filling out the application. I heard something say, go across the street. And I was like, uh, I thought it was somebody messing with me. So I heard it three times. <clears throat> on the third time, I finally got up, went across the street, interviewed with them on the spot, talked to the manager. I got home and told my wife, I said, hey, I went to this hotel, you know, I had an impromptu interview. As soon as I got done talking to her, and this is a true story, no later than probably five minutes, I got a call from that hotel, and they said, hey, can you start tomorrow? Hmm. Now, no no drug test, no nothing, no, you know, all of that. And they said, can you start tomorrow? And I said, yeah. And they said, just wear a black top and uh, slacks, and, uh, you know, you'll be starting. And from that moment, I knew I had to take care of my family. This is yep. ministry. This is the ministry that I'm supposed to do. Um, I'm not supposed to be out here chasing a dream and not having a plan and not having a job to take care of it, to fall back on, basically. So, I, I, like I said, from that moment on, that's when I knew. That's, that's when the whole wisdom over hustle became a reality to me, actually. Uh, because well, you know, I here's to, another, another aspect to consider is this. The next layer of ministry, so yeah, I, I agree with you a thousand percent. I've got a wife and four kids, so there's there's first and foremost that focus. The next layer is how about all the people that you come into contact with during your you know corporate workday environment, not your um, business, not your music, but just you know helping people in in your job. A lot of people, and I feel like a lot of Christians m- miss the fact that. Well, I go to church on Sunday, and then, well, my job down at XYZ Company, that's my job. Well, wait a minute. These people need encouragement, and they need to be pointed to God, and they need to have those kind of um, encounters with someone like us, like yourself. So that becomes a major part of your ministry. And then maybe at that point, now it's like, okay, i got this little sliver of time after work, before work, on the weekend, whatever, that now I'm, I'm building that kind of dream. In fact, I'm Del Toro uh, Neil has a book called, um, and I'm not on his bandwagon. It's just you just haven't had me think about it. But it's, it's he's got a book called Between a, a, a Dream and a Job, meaning mm-hmm. I got this dream, but I got a job too. But I can't do the dream full time. But I want to do. So it's like, how do you make that transition? So I think that's a, a a great testimony of how you came to a point where it's like, God, I want this so bad, and I want it for the right reasons. But then he kind of shifted your your perspective a little bit. Definitely. He he shifted it. And like I said, I, I'm so grateful for it because at the end of the day, I wanted to do ministry. And it's not just through music. Yeah, I know how to rap. I know how to do all that and make music. That's fine and dandy. But like you said, every day, and I was working at a hotel, and I am still working at a hotel now. I'm actually uh, becoming a manager at a hotel. So the great part about it, that is because I see people every day. I I can't even t- you you see so many cultures, nationalities, you see so many different people when working at a front desk at a hotel that no matter it, I, I kind of use it to my advantage as being a Christian because no matter how they come in, people could be upset mm-hmm. coming to a hotel, you know, you know, you don't you lost the hotel, you you don't know where it is, you're mad at the incidental fees, you're mad that mm-hmm. you got overpriced, the room doesn't look right. Uh, you got lost on the way to a hotel. There's so many things that's going on. But at the same time, I have to sit at the front desk. And I have to be kind. I have to be nurturing. I have to be emphasize, understand, and just be like, you know what? I do apologize for this. Um, a lot of people don't know when you're working at the front desk and people come to a hotel, and I'm sure you've experienced this, if that front desk person isn't happy or exciting or just isn't involved and doesn't make you feel comfortable, Nine times out of ten, you won't enjoy your stay because of how yeah. that how you were treated at the front desk when you when your first impression when you come into a hotel. So that's why I take um, 
like I said, I can take that to advantage for me being a Christian. No matter what situations that other people are going through in their life, which everybody has situations or problems, I still have to be loving. I still have to show love, be kind, encouraging. And that's what helps me with my music as well. So many people are involved and so many people deal with so many different things that there has to be somebody that they can talk to, somebody that can listen, uh, you know, and help and give them some advice if needed, you know. So, that's why I, I just thank God for, for me being able to have that breaking point in my life to where I stepped up, listened. I didn't run away from him. I actually listened and uh, got on the right track. And not to mention just for my family because, like I said, we were struggling. But now everything is good. You know, it's just uh, you use that B word, the blueprint, and you yeah. can't build a house without a blueprint. You can't yeah. take a trip without some sort of a map or GPS. Um, and I think the same way with life, you know, I think we, we tend to plan more, uh, on our next vacation, do more planning than we do on our life. And if you have a blueprint and, and here's another recommendation, if you've never heard of this one, um, just Google blueprint for life. It's a wonderful course. It's, t- I think it's $25 and it's just a massive, um, workbook and course, eight modules taking you through how to um, create a godly biblical blueprint for your life based on um, fitness and family and spiritual and finances and all these areas of our life that do impact things. Because if your health is not of, of in the utmost shape, then you can't do some of the things that the Lord wants you to do. If your finances aren't in shape, you can't do some of the things you want that the Lord wants you to do. So I think that that's a huge takeaway that that um, that you have realized at at a really good young age. So here's um, here's uh, your record label and your singles and your your ministry and your impact. What are some um, as we kind of wrap this up? Because I want to keep. We could probably talk for about another four and a half hours, you know, on, on examples and ideas and get really excited and I. I love this conversation, but what are some? Where, what is the best way that people can experience your music, or what's the best way that they can uh, learn more about you? Yeah, so uh, actually, what you guys can do, uh, and I, I thank you for this opportunity first and foremost. I really do appreciate you for allowing me on the show. Uh, but uh, definitely, people can go to my website of wohmusic.com. That's wohmusic.com. Uh, you can find out information there. Uh, like I said, the my biography will be up on the page today, actually. Uh, so we'll definitely get everything up and uh, up for everybody so they can read a little bit more about me. Um, also, ReverbNation.com backslash Scuda. That's ReverbNation, R-E-V-E-R-B-N-A-T-I-O-N.com backslash Scuda, S-C-O-O-D-A. Um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram are always, I'm always on that. Um, and everything is Scooter Woe. So S C O O D A W O H. That's my Facebook. That's my Twitter. Uh, that's Instagram. And, uh, you can find me and get more information about me. Like I said, I'm always tweeting and trying to keep people up to date with my life and helping out other people too. So nice. Well, I'm, uh, I'm on your website now, um, wohmusic.com, W-O-H music.com. It's a nice, clean, crisp uh, looking site with a lot of great information. So there's all of your links to your social media and your Twitter feeds. And so really nice looking site. So thank you thank um, for your time, but also thank you for uh, your uh, uh, ministry and your purpose and for listening and not going down a path of uh, me, 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 but going on a path of impacting others around you. I, I really appreciate that about your, your story and your bio. Thank you. I really appreciate it, Mike. You're welcome, brother. Have a good day. You too. God bless. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.